Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Timorja, and we're back for another episode of Black and Indie. Now, we're getting ready to hit Thanksgiving break, and uh, before we get too far into our Thanksgiving topics, we want to just do a quick introduction of our co-host, for those who may not know. Blake, how you feeling, man? I'm doing good. I'm ready to go to sleep already. But, um, already? Did you have a long day? Oh, yeah. I had, like, three classes, two meetings, and I got a presentation for tomorrow, so it's kind of busy. Okay. All right. D, how you? I'm okay. This time change is like killing me. I went to bed at seven o'clock yesterday. Seven o'clock in the evening? PM. And you woke up what time? Six AM. Oh. That's long sleep. That but I bet it was good though. It was great. Listen. I was so woke up, I was like, Oh my goodness. I feel refreshed today. Like I don't feel the urge to take a nap. Okay. All right, bet. Erd, how you feeling? I feel tired. <laughs> <laughs> Refreshment. Um, <laughs> Weirdly, had three classes today, and I have a presentation tomorrow. Really? Oh, what class? Uh, what classes did I? Well, the presentation. I have uh, integral human development. Mm. Peace studies major. Peace studies. Okay. All right, that works. Listen, bring the peace, please. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to tell you. So I want to sort of give you all some backdrop on what I came across on Instagram this week. So there is this one article that's going out. Came out on November 10th, and it says Texas teens dressed as KKK members for Halloween strike one and attacked two black children strike two um by this point we we've we're already aware of what's going on in america we've discussed race relations we've discussed racism we've discussed critical race theory we've discussed what's wrong and what's right uh and i guess my question is how can you not be aware that what you're doing is wrong and but then to add insult to injury you attack two black children and these are high schoolers athletes uh so I don't get it. Like, what are your thoughts on the stupidity of, of this act? I mean, this is like, this is one of those things where I'm like appalled and shocked, but also not at all. I guess so. <laughs> like yeah. This is, like, I'm appalled, but not shocked. Like, this is what happens when, like, we have four years, but also, like, of the last president, but also, like, decades of people saying that this is okay to do to black people. Yeah. This is like, like, the next generation is picking up on these cues. Like and on these like uh, like reading in between the lines to sh to say that oh black people don't matter and AKK is cool and racism is back in again guys like and so I I, I don't think it ever left but I think there is like a kind of renewal of that message where it's it. not shot down like as hard as it should be in some certain circles. I agree, I agree. Yeah, um, when I think about about that whole incident, I'm just like people cannot tell me that they don't understand slavery racism or etc in america when you can act like that right. like i am not convinced that they don't know the conditions that black people are subjugated to because they can reinforce those conditions exactly. i i am completely upset i would not give these students at all the benefit of the Go doubt home. expel them that's all <laughs> there is no doubt like yeah <laughs> No, 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 they didn't kill them. Oh. No, they tased them. That's what they actually Jesus did. Christ, oh. And how old were I mean, these cool. children? High school. No. Uh, all it says is high school. It no, says, but I'm talking about the black children that they attacked. Oh, uh, it never actually gave the ages. Um, Let's it, just say they're eight. Yeah. <laughs> okay, throw a different fact down there. Like that's a good number. <laughs> you know, I, I'm a fall and I, and I feel like, you know, whose kids are these? Like, you know, I, it, they ain't mine. Right. Shoot, I wish like, I they were. Like if you're the perpetrator, like if you're doing harm to somebody, you should understand the harm that you're doing. Like there's no way that you're going about this and thinking that, you know, they're not going to be affected afterwards. And I feel like we're coming to a point in society where it's like you could do anything and get away with it with a slap on the wrist. Mm -hmm. Like this past, I don't know, five years. I mean, it's been a longer time than that, but yeah. I just like it's just been case after case after case. And like you said, I feel like we're getting desensitized to everything that's going on. Like. A building can fall down. Like, I'm being honest with you. A building can fall down. You know, tragedy can happen. A bunch of people, you know. I don't think I would be affected to where I feel sad because things happen so often around me. Yeah. So. I get it. That's, that's it. I get it. And I think, I like, years and years of repeatedly seeing police officers, like, other white people get away with yeah. being black people. And, like, and that's what the next generation is learning. Is they're like, I can tase a kid and yeah. be fine because I'm white and they're black. Like literally, that is the message that they're getting, mm -hmm. and I I don't think they're incorrect in, in that message because yeah. we've seen too many acquittals, too many people walk from straight up murdering and killing black 
I feel it. I feel it. And, and the way, and just for you to even wake up in the morning, put on this, this uniform and to not even question if this is right. What in your mind tells you that it's okay to wear this? I don't care what, what, what holiday it is. Um, and as far as even dressing up, there was a post that was going around on social media and said, if you have to question if it's good or not, then you probably need not do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but apparently they didn't have this, they didn't have this barometer or whatever to tell them, y'all, ch- chill out, chill out. But I don't know. D, what you got? Um, my co- topic is very similar. Uh, so I wanted to talk about the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse because I just think, <laughs> yes, go ahead and sigh. <laughs> Usually I have the lighthearted topics, but this week it's a little heavy. And my issue is the the optics around the whole trial. So the fact that he was able to pick his jurors out of a lottery, um, and when we see the pictures of his tears and him picking his lottery, I think of the type of message that that sends to the people who's reading it. And then when I thought about that, I thought about Facebook and the whistleblowers. So I can only yeah. imagine the yeah. type of people who are who are seeing him cry, who are seeing him pick his lottery, and, and the type of power that that has given him in this courtroom. Because as I was reading it, it says that a lot of court clerks and judges normally do the lottery hosting. So why did he do it? Even though it, it has like, it's a random select of jurors, right? Cool, but just the power that it gave him to be able to do it, yeah. it, it gives a message. And, and what does that say to the people who are ready to protest? Um, depending on the trial for either or side, Listen here. Um, you know what I'm Listen. saying? It's, it's really ridiculous, and, and I wanted to know the type of message that you all perceive from it, especially because he had one one charge dismissed. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, Erda, take it. Please bring peace. <laughs> Erda, bring it's, peace. It's, it's trash 99. Like, it is literally, like, I, I've been following this, and I feel like the trial and right wing and whoever is trying to, like, shorten this down and say it's just self-defense. Yeah. As in, just in those, like, five minutes or however long it took for him to shoot two people, he just feared for his life and that's it. But it's like you have to think about everything that happened beforehand. Exactly. Like why was he there? Yeah. Why was he underage? Why did he have a gun like illegally? All of these things like, where he put himself in the danger and then other people around him were like a white kid with a gun and not just like a small one but like a huge giant gun. Yes. Yeah, you don't, you don't, get, you don't oh, find these in Walmart. This ain't no Nerf right. gun or Super Soaker. His, like oh my <laughs> self-defense is worth more than your self-defense essentially. Like, that's what we're saying. That's the optics here, right? Is that Kyle's self-defense is worth more than all those people who thought, here's a kid with a gun and I need to protect everyone else, right? And, and that's what people are shortening it down to. And it's like, no, that's, he put himself in that situation. Exactly. Like, and that's that, like, you, to send out that message to say that if you, if you see protesters, if you see other people breaking the law, you're allowed to go out there and be a vigilante and yeah. pretend to be a cop and pretend to be someone with authority, mm. even though you're a teenager with a giant gun. Yeah. And then if you mess about <laughs> and end up shooting two people, you're going to get away with it. Like, yeah, like you, you just be like, oh, I feared for my life. He and just the- put out the fire <sighs> in, his, in his whole statement. Yeah. Put out the fire. The fires you were causing? Like, you, could just <laughs> like, you, you kill folks. Like, you just add into it. But, you know, my thing is this guy gets to chew. I wish, I wish everyone who was in the courtroom who was black would get to choose their jurors by doing a lottery themselves. I wish. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. Uh, I, I heard of what you got. <laughs> it's just Stress. stupid to it's me. Dumb. But okay. It's very dumb. Real, and it's just upsetting. And, and to see it and the fact that we all are like, yeah, he's going to walk, right? He's, he cries. I don't know, because we've seen this before. Right. And it's just like the fact that we're all resigned to that. And the fact that like the other side is being like, oh, no, why would you threaten to you know protest over this? Right. Why are you like threatening the legal process? And it's like, no, like this was, we started off unfair. Like, yeah, we started literally. off with injustice. Anyways, my topic is not much lighter. <laughs> um, but it's basically, I was kind of thinking about the fact that Notre Dame doesn't have fraternities and sororities, and I know you're in a fraternity, yeah. uh, so I'd like you to speak to this, but I, I'm thinking, like, is this part of the reason why uh, black students here, as well as other minorities, maybe don't feel like they have a space? Is because the dorms, like, when you kind of standardize things, 
for the norm, which is white, <laughs> mm -hmm. dorm life might not be great if you're part of a minority, if you're part of LGBTQ, if you're black, like it might not be great for you as like your substitute fraternity or sorority. Yeah. And maybe if there was that kind of space for students to be at, maybe they would be feel better about going here. Yeah, I feel it. Like the thing is with, with Notre Dame, so one thing about it, my, I'm back sure, my godfather was a part of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Um, but when he became a Catholic priest, he had to denounce his letters. He pledged at Bethune-Cookman. Um, but then later on, I got with that Xavier in um, Louisiana, they have the Divine Nine there, and they are a Catholic school. So I think it all depends upon, it's just me, I think it depends upon who is the head of that school. And the thing about it is, all the Xavier is an HBCU. Correct? Yeah, they are an HBCU, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. I, th I thought so. Xavier? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are elements of the HBCU that you just can't take HBCU. away, which is the, mm -hmm. the Divine Nine. Yeah. So I wonder what the toss-up was between that. Do we stick to our Catholic ideals and tell our students that they can't have any other gods before them or commit to any organization that affects their commitment to being a Catholic student? Or do we just bring the whole HBCU experience and disregard that? Because I, I, I don't know. I don't know. What's up, Blake? As a black student, I feel like we should bring the whole HBCU experience. But my argument against that is that Notre Dame as a Catholic institution doesn't really like forcefully promote their Catholicism. Like, yeah, it's there, but it's not like they're saying, like, to be here, you have to be Catholic. Mm -hmm. So being that they're not pushing that point, I feel like to be a part of another organization, they should allow that. Being that they're basically trying to make um, the dorms like frats. Yeah, yeah. For white students. The, that's the equivalent. And it does not work as a black student coming from a, a, another place because you will always feel like the intruder. And like, I, I ain't gonna lie, my, my first year experience, it was like a bunch of guys, you know, was trying to do the whole frat thing. They came to my room with a bunch of beer, stepped on all my things, you know. Yeah, nah, nah, not even lying. Dropped the beer on my futon, I just bought it. And <clears throat> that was my experience of trying to like, you know, become a part of the dorm to be something bigger. So that's why I feel like we should have frats or other places that black students or students of minority should go to that's outside of campus. Yeah. Mm. I think that's the thing. There, there is places, right? We have the BGSA Black Graduate Student Association. Like mm -hmm. We have student associations for black kids, right? Yeah. And for other minorities as well, or like affinity groups you could call yeah. them. But I think frats and sororities like add in like another level of like intimacy and level oh, yeah. of like belonging that's different than just a student organization yeah and i think like i've heard that a lot that people are like oh we don't need frat and sororities we have the dorms but that <laughs> leaves out a lot of people oh, yeah most definitely exactly. my freshman year oh my god freshman weekend <laughs> I was pissed. First of all, I drove 14 hours to get here. And then when I feeling. got here, <laughs> they wanted us to stay up and sing serenade songs in, in Louis' yeah, basement. Yeah, I've heard of that. I was like, first of all, this is way too many white women for me. <laughs> I I wanted to be in an AKA or a Delta. And this is like a complete slap in the face for me. I walked away because it was just like, I am singing Taylor Swift. Somebody please <laughs> send help. Um, but I, I felt... <clears throat> I felt completely excluded. I, I felt like this was not a culture or a place for me. And then right then and there, I knew how Notre Dame would look for the next four years. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I think, don't they have like a dorm? There's a dorm here with like some Greek letters on top of the building, or there used to be. At least I've seen it before because I've seen people, on, students on campus wearing a shirt. It's not a real fraternity, but they have Greek letters naming like one of their dorms or something. Yeah, I, can, wait, I know dorm, what right? you're talking about. It is a dorm. It is a dorm. Because they got, they got, some some that's affiliated to like Catholics. It's um by um, Morrison, not Morrison. Uh, it's come on. No idea. Oh, I don't know. Barely go to the sink. <laughs> <What's up? laughs> I'm here for like a month. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it exists somewhere on campus. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, but you know, I will say this. You always have an opportunity to do something once you graduate. Yeah. Keep that in that's, mind. That's all I thought about yeah. after I get past these four years of I whiteness. So. I feel it. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm with you. Blake, what you got, man? Uh, I wanted to talk about the societal relationship between men and women. So I wanted to say, like, in the past, men established the societal norms for other men. So the blame can't be put on the opposite sex to why we're in this situation of constant strife between us. And then I wanted to say that men and women owe each other and are responsible for coming up with this new societal norm. And that, um, you know, since we're now on equal footing. Because before, like, you know, women didn't have as much power as men in society. It feels weird as a man to say that. But they didn't. 
you know, and then now that they do, you know, women have equal shares as to what men, you know, say. They should have, um, we should reestablish those norms. And then the reason I'm bringing this up is because of the whole the baby situation. So he's kicking his baby moms out, you know, it's his kid, he knows it. Um, they're going through some type of situation, but the media is like, you know, chewing the baby up like, I, I mean, I am as well, as a black man, he should not be kicking out no black woman, or a woman at all, but, you know, the situation happened, and as you look deeper in it, there's assault cases being, like, placed against Danny Lay, and um, basically there's domestic abuse, and I'm bringing this up because how are we supposed to look at that, knowing that, you know, there isn't a real relationship on how a man should treat a woman or a woman should treat a man. Wait, so you're saying there's not a real relationship out there? There, there, there isn't one to really work on. It's basically about perspective and how um, the media portrays it. Like, Tory Lane shot a woman in the foot, named the Stallion. Mm -hmm. um, he immediately canceled for a whole mm -hmm. year, you know, he, and um, likewise, there was a female rapper from Chicago. She shot a man in the head, and on Twitter, they were, like, praising her for her actions. And, like, being that, you know, society is putting itself on a crutch, like, picking sides and stuff like that, we need to, like, have a conversation about how we're going to hold each other responsible. So that's why I was bringing this topic up. How do y'all feel about that? Do you think – so I, what I have – what I see as a common thread is that you're, you're bringing rappers or hip-hop artists into the conversation. So let me ask you this. Are you only basing this conversation based off of what rap artists do, or are there other relationships out there? that are still positive, like Angela Bassett and Courtney B. Vance, or, um, or maybe Viola and her husband, or even, you know, I don't know, I'm sure there are some, there are some examples of. People aren't gonna like it, but I think Will and Jada's relationship See, is. See, I, I was gonna mention, but I, I tried to stay away from it, <laughs> that entanglement. Like that, <laughs> At least so, they're honest. That's the thing yeah, they're, they're yeah, and, and that, that's a, di so, uh, so now we're sort of diving into the territory of, do we want a traditional relationship or one that is a bit different because I don't know, but if, if we're speaking about just positive relationships, Angela Bassett for like the first one I, I just sort of thought about. Mm -hmm. um, and I know there are some other positive ones out there that I'm drawing a blank on right now, but I, I really don't believe, unfortunately because the baby is such a public figure, there are people who look up to him. And if I be honest with you, and just enlighten me, what, what good has the baby done? Does he make good music? <laughs> uh, <laughs> After the first album, it was like, come on now. But I haven't heard about a lot of good he's done, you know? I've tried to, like, you know, find it. <laughs> so, you know, I don't, I don't think he's a great role model to go off of. And, yes, there are, you know, other great relationships that we can, like, call to, you know, use as an example. Yeah. But I'm, I'm more of talking about, like, from my experience and what I grew up seeing and mm -hmm. watching in movies and what the common um, – perspective was, you know, there's always some fight between the black man and the black woman, and there's always some problem with taking care of the kids, staying at home, the nuclear family is broken up, and that was a situation, that's why I was using the baby situation to portray that. Got you. I would like to hear from our black women. What do y'all think? Um, I think because, like, a lot of, the conversation around this, a lot of people were blaming Danny because Danny knew that he has a lot of issues with his first baby mom, and she decided to make herself however, whatever number she is, but the number of like different baby fathers and different baby mothers kept coming up in this conversation. Mm -hmm. And um, I just feel like people are, or at least our generation, are trying to get back to an age where there's like, you know, just two people together, Black women don't have to struggle for love. And I think that is what's happening here with Danny Lay because a lot of the conversation as well is like, he's saying she was a side chick and he's and she's like, boy, I was rocking with you and you know you was rocking with me. So it's a lot of like back and forth, but I, um, in terms of actual relationships that are, you know, nice, I think there are some out there that we just, we just don't get to see because this is the type of stuff that yeah. they put on a pedestal. Um, and that's just that. Yeah. I think it, it's not even that it's put on a pedestal. It's that you're not going to hear about the boring, positive, happy relationships. Like, that's not yeah. going to make the news. You're going to hear about the baby apparently kicking someone what, out of his house. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right? And, and like, the, the mother of his child, right? And, and, and I just, I don't know a lot about the situation mm -hmm. or the specifics, but I, I feel like the one thing that we can all know and the, the, the thing that should be clear is that, like, 
not only should you take care of your kids or take care of your wife, whatever, like, it, it's not, you don't do these things out of, like, charity. It's not like mm. the baby was, like, taking care of her out of the goodness of his heart or right. whatever. Like, she's <laughs> he's taking care of her because she's the mother. Of the yeah, kid, you know what I mean? Literally. Like, that's not, and I, I think that's kind of the thing that comes up a lot in discussions of alimony or child support or she's a gold digger, whatever, right? Like, this idea that, like, men are taking care of women as like a act of charity or like oh let me help you out whatever but it's like no this is <laughs> like th- she is providing whatever that she is providing well, she has her own money <laughs> right yeah. but also like I- I- if you think about like being the kid right and that's how the courts think about it and that's why people get mad about oh the child support payment is too much but it's like if you are a child and you're growing up you deserve to <laughs> mm. like not not because of charity but because of how life works like you deserve to live at the same standard that your father is living at like say less. biological like that's what it is mm-hmm. like I, I just want to say something real quick mm-hmm. so the audience know um real pushback um do it in certain states men are um they have to pay child support even if the child isn't theirs. Wait, I never heard that before. Since when? Oh no, it's a real thing. I think it's in Mich- Michigan. One of the, like it's a real thing. Like you can you can prove biologically that that's not your kid. Mm-hmm. She could put your name on the um on the birth certificate. If he signed that paper, then it's a little questionable. Like, yeah, exactly. Like there are guys that did not sign the paper. The women could just put a name on there, and he has to pay that. And there are, there are tons of cases. Like you can look this up online. There's tons of cases yeah. of this happening. And while, you know, as a single parent child, I do believe in child support. Mm-hmm. What I don't believe in and is, you know, if that's not your child, you should not be paying that. Yeah, I, I think there's different, um, I think with that case or with that lie, it might be like if you were like taking care and kind of being a father to the mm-hmm. kid for a while. Yeah. Like I think that's, I don't think the woman can just write a random name. Like yeah, I can't just be like Obama. And yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Obama money. <laughs> like I don't think that's it. But even then, like, I, again, I don't know a lot about this. But I do know the courts always think about the benefit of the child, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's when people are like, oh, that's not fair, whatever. But if you think about it, like, why? Like, the kid has nothing to do with your beef, with your fighting, with your right. whatever, like, yeah. with your fair. Like, they just want to grow up and, like, not become a burden to the state and to have all of the things kids should have, and that costs money, mm-hmm. right? And Certainly. whatever level you're at as the father, like, that's the level that the kid should be at. Whatever level you're at, the mom, because the reverse also happens. Yeah. That like is if true. the mom is making more money and the dad has full cut, like, all of it, right? Mm-hmm. And I think there's a lot of other stuff around sexism and around, you know, women get more custody, around women are just seen as more, like, better parental figures, all of these things that also need to be discussed. But at the end of the day, like, it's just, I, my, my thing is that it's, it's not out of the goodness of your heart. I feel like it. It is just, <laughs> it's what it. you, d- you did the deed, you, you yeah. got to pay yeah. for your child. Okay. It's just, <laughs> you, you gave the seed, so do the deed. Okay, there, okay. Go. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so, so here's a question I saw then as we get ready to wrap this up on the show. So the question I have for everybody, is it okay to date multiple people when you're single? Absolutely. Oh, when you're single? You're ready to make What do you mean there? date? Like, are you saying like before you have the are we exclusive talk? Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean, what do you mean by that? Yeah. Like uh define okay. your terms. How many dates? <laughs> <laughs> if if I'm talking to uh say um Quita. All right, so 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 so, so, so me and Quita are, are are talking, I'm single, she's single, and we're dating. Mm-hmm. And we're somewhat getting, you know, exclusive, but we haven't had the exclusive conversation. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's morally right to still have entanglements with other people absolutely have those entanglements <laughs> until someone says i would like to be exclusive with you or i would like to be your boyfriend girlfriend date him she say whatever okay as long as y'all both agree to it don't sit around here and waste your time putting all your eggs <laughs> in one basket <laughs> because you think it's gonna work Absolutely, date other people because you never know what someone else is doing, what someone else's intentions are with you. Because I feel like if someone knows that they like you and they have intentions on dating you, they're going to let that be clear from the get-go, period. If they don't, like, I don't have time for somebody to be like, oh, I'm trying to figure out if I like you or not. No, I need you to know if you like me by the first date. I, I, think, I think she knows this from experience. Oh, right? yes, absolutely. And this, <laughs> yeah, is, this, is, this is very much experience. And this is more for women than men because men yeah. like to, all right, all right. it's a lot. But anyways. Don't 
mm. do as that. All right. Because <laughs> um, as a man, like, I'm the type of person where I tell you, like, up front, like, if I'm trying to get in a relationship, if I'm not trying to get in a relationship, like, I, I'll tell you, like, I, look, I, I like you, but I'm this, I don't want to, you know, be tied down. Like, that's a real thing. Like, if you, look, you was like, well, legit, be honest, at least I'm honest, you know? Yeah. And I feel like, you know, I think that's something it's like, won't do. It, it's be clear both in your communication, mm-hmm. but yeah. also in your actions. Yes. Yeah. So like you can't be doing relationship things if you right. don't like Exactly. Where it's like, all right, exactly. y'all exactly. doing too much to just be saying y'all dating. Well, I'm about to give, like, I'm about to give my, my account information if, you, if we just, like, dating. Like, right. no, we, we're not serious yet. Right. Like, I, I think the, the, the key here is to just talk. And don't make assumptions. Don't just assume yes. that someone is going to be exclusive with you. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't assume that, out. like, yeah. all these things. Like, be clear and say it loudly. But I also was like, did this come from personal? experience nah. are you going through something right no, now? No, I, I just saw it on Instagram. That's all. Right. Are, y- are you juggling <laughs> no, some options listen, right I, I've now? I've watched too many episodes of Insecure, so I'm, oh I'm just asking. <laughs> no, please keep your options open. Yeah. Always keep your options open until you know that that person has decided to be exclusive with you. True. Why, why are you keeping your options open? Do not do the same thing you're doing with every option. Every option shouldn't be the same to you. That, that's what I will say. Like, I, I feel like if you taking somebody on dates and you know y'all hanging out at the crib, y'all do your thing, like you shouldn't be doing that with seven other, you know. Wait, but if you're single, you can do that though. Nah, nah. Let me put it. Let me give you a number, okay? A number. Pass a certain number, oh. you want. That's <laughs> true. You know what I mean? Like, that is not true. I, I, I can't deny that. Max, max. You only I've need on three. three dates. Wait, like, D, how many D? Like, like, like I'm just saying. Like, what am I saying? You know. More. If you go, if you gonna wild out, Max. bro. Listen, if you wilding out, bro. Max three, bro. Like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, <laughs> Friday, Saturday. Keep it simple, okay? With a day to rest. Um, a day to alternate rest. Alternate the days. I'm telling you. Get a calendar. Get a <laughs> I feel like, like I feel like the answer is really to just relax, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Calm down yeah. Chill. But look and do what you want, though. And I and I feel like be clear, like, mm-hmm. cause to me, dating means. We want to get in a relationship. That's what I'm thinking. Right? Yeah, and so hanging. if you're dating multiple people, then that means that in, at some point one of them will be in a relationship with you. Yeah. But then if you're just like hooking up, if you're just if you're not ready for a relationship right now, just be clear about that and mm-hmm. state that, and also don't expect dating things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Like I feel like we don't that. even date no more. I feel like we're in a new generation where we just be chilling. You know Wait. What I mean? So what did you do in your generation? No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying in my He's, generation. Like, oh, and you okay? I thought you meant like. No, no, no. no. Well, because you're actually in a different generation from what the kids. Well, they got so, Alpha and Omega after the Z's, but what? The next generations after us. Really? Alpha, yeah, Generation Alpha, Generation Omega. Oh yeah, after Gen X, I think you're Gen, Gen X. Z. We Are you Gen, Gen Z? Z? Yeah. No. Gen Z? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, oh, I am man. born in 2000. I am 21 years old. That's it, <laughs> and like, that is all. I, for real, yeah. y'all got me lost, because last time I heard, the people who are supposed to be like Gen Z, Gen X, yeah, they were right. using it wrong, and it's yeah, the term for yeah. us. So, you know what? Yeah. I'm done. I'm just Deontay Martin. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, like, we use the term chilling now. Like, we don't be like, oh, let's go out on a date. You know, let's hang out. Like, it's, like I've, but that's I ain't gonna lie. How, how often have you seen the word date in a text message like but that's, that's the one thing some people making assumptions and being like oh i thought we were dating but you're yeah. like no we're just chilling, we're just chilling. You know what I mean? that's why you have to be clear you have to be clear i mean say. i mean yeah. i feel like i feel like where i'm from like dudes really just say how they feel so you gonna understand how do they feel about you like because some do you know oh, we'll pass our time <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll come back to this later but anyways yeah. thank y'all for checking us out <laughs> y'all have a good Ooh, evening Lord. <laughs>